So this is our biggest table we built to date. And in this video, I'm going to show you our journey of how we got to this point and going into detail on how we built it, show you our techniques and methods so you can build the best table yourself. Let's go. So this specific slab we got in stock, we bought this slab from a town called Tsanin. It's about four, four and a half hour drives from where I stay in Pretoria. And we bought this specific slab in early this year at May 2021. And it stood in the kiln oven for about four months. And we had it in stock for about two months before we got the right client for, for this big table. So we're going to start off. If you guys are following me right from the beginning, you would know that we are not in favor of sealing our live edges and there's a number of reasons uh, we don't do it but for this specific table our client wants a high gloss see-through finish and that's why we seal our edges and i just want to give you advice if you guys are going this route make sure you take a steel brush once your epoxy is dry and you can just scuff up all your um, epoxy you sealed your, your edges with. Moving to the next step, I actually made a video on how to calculate epoxy. I am going to leave a link now if you want to go and check it out. I'm explaining every single thing, going into detail, everything you need to know on how to calculate epoxy. Just as any other epoxy project, this is the absolute most fun part of your project is where you pour your epoxy. And if you guys know me, we unfortunately can't afford deep casting epoxy. That's why we buy epoxy that we need to cast in layers. And that's also a question we get a lot from our supporters and our fans on social media. And they ask, they continuously ask us why we don't pour one go on say simple deep casting epoxy is just too expensive and to push our tables up and make it more expensive and then it's just going to be harder to sell them and we can't be competitive with our competitors out there if it makes any sense <laughs> and as you can see i'm standing in my flops and my jogging pants <laughs> this is because this was around about nine o'clock at night when it was a little bit cooler because in south africa now it's really hot during the day and to cast epoxy during a hot day is not a good idea so this is the part where i actually skipped a few parts uh once your epoxy is dry you need to Put your table on a CNC machine to make it flat on top and at the bottom. So this part uh, we obviously didn't record. So the table is back in our shop. And you can see I'm starting straight away with my Festool Rotex machine. Getting all the CNC marks off. And the Rotex is the perfect tool to remove your CNC marks. So getting our slab back from the CNC supplier, <laughs> it took us a total of 10 people transporting the table to the CNC supplier, transporting it back. So yes, I estimate this table is around about half a ton, 500 kilograms. Um, yes, it's a beast. But anyway, getting it back from our CNC supplier, we put our Festool Rotex machine uh, with the 80 grit to remove all the lines the CNC machine made. So basically what I'm going to do now is this is the bottom side of the table. Now there's obviously a lot of small imperfections, cracks and holes we need to fill. Now how we've done it before is we would typically use the same color epoxy and we would only fill the crack. Meaning that 50% of the time when you're going to sand that little bit of epoxy away, the epoxy leaves a small stain on the wood. Now. What we've done after that is we would use clear epoxy. Now that worked, but it wasn't perfect. So 
our new method and I actually made a video recently on it going into much more detail on this specific topic. I'll leave a link now if you want to go and check it out. But the way we do it now is we would cover our complete surface with epoxy. It basically means that we stain the whole wood on the underside and on the top side and then obviously when it's dry we will come and sand it down. But as we cover the complete surface with epoxy at the same time we cover all the small cracks and all the small imperfections and holes. So that's the method we recently use and it's been working perfectly for us. So after applying your epoxy over your complete surface I waited about a day and a half for that epoxy to set and then using my Rotex machine again uh, on the Rotex setting you removing all the epoxy from your table and then we're going to start the sanding process from here and as I mentioned before in a lot of our previous videos if you're going to build a table always make sure you build your mold slightly bigger so when you make a mistake there is room for error so we built all our tables slightly bigger and then we just cut it to its final size once we are busy with the sanding process and this method is a guaranteed that your table will finish on the exact dimensions you gave your client So just giving my table a 45 degree chamfer right around on top and at the bottom and we would normally sand to around about 320 grit before we continue sanding then from 320 grit we will router our table and then we will continue sanding from there on forward. So how do we get a high gloss see-through finish on all our tables? I actually made a video specifically on this table where I'm going into intense detail on the methods and the techniques we take in getting a high gloss see-through finish on all our tables. This video is going to be launched next week. But in a nutshell, you basically sand your table from 80 grit all the way to 1500 grit then we've got the Festool polish system. They got three different polishes with three different polish pads and that's basically the method we take in getting a high gloss see-through finish on all our tables. We're going to start off with the orange pad which is a medium uh, sponge pad with the orange polish compound. Then we're going to move to the medium to fine sponge pad with the blue polish compound then the last step in polishing our table we're going to move to the white uh, sponge pad which is a very fine pad with the final polish compound this, this system is specifically designed in getting a super high gloss finish on all your tables
So the video I made on how to get a high clause finish and the techniques and methods we are using, I made a video, like I said, that's going to be launched next week where I'm going into detail, like intense detail on every single step you need to take to get a mirror type finish on all your tables. So make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the ring bell button so you don't miss out. And that's how you polish a table. Now the last thing that's left is to oil our table and we will use Otis Oil Super Duper and after Super Duper we will use the standard Otis Oil. So before I show you the final product make sure you support us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel that's honestly just helping us to produce more content. Also make sure you follow me on our social media platforms Facebook and Instagram. We are also currently busy with our website and most important I'm currently busy with a document going into full detail on how to build these tables. I know I'm saying this for the last two three months. Uh, we are literally just waiting for our website. We've got some final touches where I will be posting this document um, for you to download where we're going into detail on how to build these tables. You can literally download this document and start the epoxy company the next day. So the good news is our website is officially done. It's live and I am going to leave a link now down in the description where you can find this absolute monster of a document that I've been writing for the last six to eight months going into intense detail on how we built all our tables you can literally download this document read through it study it and you can start an epoxy table manufacturing company the next day so link down in the description go and support us thanks guys hope you guys enjoy the final product and i'll see you next week with another super cool video